The Cursed Forest by Hexa House Games. It plays four to six players, takes about 45 minutes to an hour to play, and it's for ages 13 and up, 12 and up. And in the game, you are going to be a victim, or you're going to be a person wandering through the Cursed Forest. There are multiple different players you can choose from, and you will then select one of those victims and start in the beginning space of the game. And the rounds will go as you take actions like moving and searching and decoding and finding unique cursed spaces and drawing cursed cards. And eventually, somebody will become cursed. And when they're cursed, they will turn into a scary beast. Like, for instance, this uh, werewolf here, or maybe something like this witch here. And one player will then go up against the rest of the team or group. And then it becomes a one versus many style game where the players are trying to decode the bunker and get inside before the evil is able to take away a certain number of players from the game by either critically wounding them or simply removing them from the game altogether. Can you get to the bunker and remain safe before the evil gets you? Or if you're the evil, can you remove players from the game by feasting on them, turning them into slimes, and other random different things you can do that's evil and ghoulish? Let's go ahead and take it down below. I will show you the game Victim of the Cursed Forest and everything that comes in the game. We'll talk about how to play it and then we'll come up with my review. Here we have Hexa House's victim, the cursed forest, and everything included in the game, well, at least as far as the prototype is concerned. This is a prototype, so it is subject to change, and as well as changes in the rules is also likely and possible as the campaign goes. Here we have all the components, the cards, the player boards, we'll have the tokens that are going to be used for each of the different abilities and or stats each player has. We're going to have the good guys, which are the victims, and we're going to have the bad guys, which are the evil characters. We're also going to have miniature in the game. The miniatures are going to be these little guys here, as well as the evil characters, werewolves and witches and all sorts of other things like Wadingos and whatnot. Uh, there's also going to be tiles in the game, and you're going to have a space like the bunker and the starting tent. And what players are basically going to try to do is they're going to be taking these and they're going to be placing them out on the board and they're going to try and get into the bunker. The last things you guys need to know about are going to be these tokens here, which are going to facilitate different character actions, different monster actions, these coding tokens, which will allow you to get in the bunker if you can solve the code. And then these four decks over here, the curse card deck, which will determine which player becomes which type of evil at the third round of the game. You're going to have these gate cards here where you'll use one to determine the gate number or combination to which you'll be utilizing these pieces here to get that exact number. So in this case, it's a 45. And if you can get 45 by adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing or whatever cards they have there or tokens they have there, uh, then you get out of the bunker. Uh, the last two things are the event cards. These things happen at the end of every round as well as whenever you land on a uh, cursed location. And then item cards, which when you find a body that's lying on the ground you're able to search and you'll find things like gems and boots and bats and guns players will have a starting specific set of items so for instance over here we have Rolita she's going to start with a firework and then we have somebody like uh, Sean over here who will start with a gun to set the game up simply go ahead and shuffle all of the decks Except for the event, take out the darkness card, shuffle that, and put the darkness card on the bottom, because when that card gets drawn, the game is over. Everyone chooses a victim at the beginning of the game, set aside all the other characters and all the other tokens you're not utilizing, including this red die here, and then when the third round comes along, you'll be taking out one of the evil characters based on that specific curse and who gets turned, because they'll be switching. Uh, make sure you'll then take this bunker and you're going to shuffle it in with five other tiles. When you shuffle it in with five other tiles, then you're going to divide those that set of six tiles into th two separate stacks of three. Shuffle the rest of the tiles and then place an equal number of two stacks. So that means that this bunker is going to be on the bottom of one of the two stacks in the remaining three. Uh, separate the rest of the tokens, place them aside, give any characters that might need tokens, tokens. And then also go ahead and place each character's specific colored tokens in these slots with a little arrow that will indicate their ability, their agility, intelligence, vitality, and luck. After you've done that, you have your characters placed in the middle here where the tent is, set the die, and get ready to begin the game by choosing a first player. Now you know the setup for the game, you know what comes in the game, let's go ahead and discuss how the game plays, and then what I think about it.
So we've set up the game for four players, but it can play up to six. And everybody has selected one of their characters. They've placed their stats. They have their starting equipment. And they, of course, have these die here, which they'll be utilizing throughout the entire game based on their stats. The tokens are set aside. The cards are set aside. And these decks have been placed correctly, as well as we have the all the different evils set aside. I have these two to show you. I was using some proxies due to the mail. These are resin, and it did not turn out so well for them. However, uh, I was able to play with all the different evils regardless of that fact. I've got the starting tile here in my characters and I'll just go ahead and choose a starting player and let's go with Rolita first. On your turn you're going to have a prep phase where you can play cards where you're able to trade things or, or, or play these item cards and whatnot. There's a couple things you can do during that starting phase and then after that you're then going to move on to your action phase and on the action phase you'll be doing certain things like running or crawling decoding and searching as well as trading and healing and for each of those things you're going to have a specific set of uh, skill so for instance luck is going to let you search intelligence will let you decode and heal agility will let you run vitality will let you defend uh, you're also going to have some non-actions like equipping and um testing so there's certain tiles where you'll be doing certain tests and then other things are like these skills here this one is only available when it, your specific ability reaches that specific number and this one over here is your unique character specific skill which she is able to run again on her turn and why do i say that well because on your turn you do get two actions but you can't use the same one more than once unless a rule or a character specifies otherwise right so always follow the rules unless a card says otherwise and that's for pretty much any game you're ever going to play now to begin the game she is going to choose to run running is going to allow you to move on to a tile or draw a tile and place that tile and move on to it and to determine how far she's going to go she's going to roll three die because that's based on her agility you roll these die here based on the number which is four you're then going to go ahead and choose from either stack here and you're going to move your character on a space after placement so you'll choose a space then you will move now a lot of tiles are going to have roads and you have to connect the roads but some of them are going to be different like this rock hill in which there's going to be a test on it and this one says you're going to test your vitality now her vitality is one so she gets one die and she has to roll at least a one or more in order for herself to not get a wound do we do it she does she gets her one now what's nice is she's also going to increase her vitality stat so now she is a little bit more healthy, a little bit more able to dodge when a bad guy or the evil is going to be doing damage to her. If she failed the test, she would take a wound and she would stop where she's at. However, she didn't, so she can keep going. And so she will. Next space is two. Next space is going to be three. And then she can choose to stop anytime she wants or she can keep going. And in this case, she's going to stop. And the reason she wants to stop instead of moving that extra space is because there's a corpse here. Corpses will let you try and gain equipment. To gain equipment, you'll be using luck and you'll be rolling for searching. You need a three up. Most of the things in this game are a three up. If you don't get a three up, you draw nothing. And if she did get higher than a three or a three, she would draw an item card. And that item card could be something like in a card that is going to let you use it uh, at a later time or it could be an equipable item that you can use during your prep phase that will give you something like a bonus to your stats or a bonus to your rolls in some way this is food though so it's just going to let you re-roll selected die when you discard the card she used most act actions she went ahead and ran and she went ahead and she searched so she's now done and play will go in turn order following that and that's the entire game you're going to be moving around just like that the next player is going to go we'll say it's say it's sean here sean's going to go ahead and run as well using his agility that's four so maybe he'll go one. Oh, there's a corpse there it's not so bad let's go two over here Ah, we ran into a curse tile. So the curse tile means we're going to have to draw an event card. And event cards will say certain things. They'll have specific requirements. Sometimes, and most of the time, they're going to be negative towards you. You usually have to make some type of test in which you'll check your stat, roll the die, and see if you pass it. And then afterwards, you're going to go ahead and discard that card. And then you would keep moving. So we'd move here. Came across a corpse. Let's go ahead and try and connect these tiles here. Uh, we can. That's good. And then he also will try and roll to attempt to gather a card. Now he only gets one die and the highest roll on, a, on one die is two. So in this case, he actually cannot 
successfully get an item, even if he wanted to. So it might have actually been better for him to maybe go to the Vitality. Uh, the other item, um, uh, other abilities he could use, for instance, his instead of searching and he can't run anymore because he already ran, he can decode. But the only way you can decode in the game is if you run into a tile like this. This tile here has got a little decoder on it. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to roll intelligence on the tile. If you get a three or higher, you're going to get to draw one of these ones. These ones will give you a number. After that, you will place one of these decoder tokens on that space. And you can then attempt to successfully roll again for a three or higher. And you'll get a symbol like a times, a minus, or a plus. These are important because as you go throughout the game, going on these spaces, let's just go ahead and say this player went here on their turn and they stopped here, they rolled, they successfully accomplished that goal. So they went ahead and took one of these guys here and that's a one. And then they went ahead, um, this guy went ahead and moved over here on their next turn and they rolled again. Then this person would get this one here. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to find the bunker in the game. Uh, the bunker is in the, one of the bottom three tiles in either of the stacks. And when you finally run into it, you are then going to be able to go to that space, turn in these tokens, and try and make an equation that will equal the gate. Now, the gate is going to basically open a... This bunker gate is going to open a door number. So this is 45. So when this gets found, this will be revealed. People will go onto this space here, and they're going to try and combo utilizing their little tokens here to gather the correct number that they need. To place one of these down will cost an action, as well as when you walk onto the space, or getting to the space by running there would cost one as well, usually. So that's the basic idea of the game. If you can get the combination, you'd utilizing these by going to the decoders and by using them to successfully gather an extra action on here to get both the one and two types. Then you go back to here and you place all the codes in. You can then escape. And if you can manage to escape, there's certain victory conditions, you'll win the game. Seems pretty simple, right? There's no threat. Well, the thing is, after the third round of the game, so after everybody takes a turn, the round will end. When the round ends, this player here will draw one of these cards here and do whatever it says, and usually it's a negative thing for the victims. And then that signifies the end of the round. Another round will take place, another card will be drawn, and then the third round comes along. The card is drawn, and additionally, the evil has re will reveal itself. And what you'll do is you'll shuffle this victim deck here, uh, this curse deck, and you flip over one. And then based on the type of rune stone or stone it is, you will have everybody test a specific skill. So in this case, it says everybody tests luck. And then the victim has the least points will become possessed by the witch, which is this one here. So if they all rolled and she got a zero and these guys got one, one, and a two, she would turn into a witch. So she would actually literally lose her character and all of her stuff. She would take this new board and she would put, her, uh, put one into her rage bar at the very beginning at one. Now, the bad guys play the same way. They play in the same turn order. They function the same way in a round. But their new objective is they're trying to kill the other players. They're trying to put wounds on them. Each of their abilities will require stamina and or rolling a die. Now, to roll, to move with this character here, you'll use this die here. If you ever hit a skull, that's going to give you rage, which is this indicator here. And if you roll a zero, you simply can't move. But it can go up to 10 on this die, so you can do some crazy stuff. Additionally... When you get that stamina at the beginning of your turn, every turn you'll get one, you can choose to save it or not. And if you choose to spend it on certain actions, you will do certain things, whether it's rushing up to the players and attacking them or siphoning their soul or doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Sometimes it'll have a specific attack damage on it, and other times it will let you roll this die here. The other thing to note is this, each of the characters has a unique rage ability, which means they'll have to utilize their rage by bringing it to the bottom. And if they do, they can use that ability. It's a very powerful ultimate that takes a while to charge up. And their objective is just to simply get two players or more, depending on the amount of players, to be critically, uh, sorry, to be, to be removed from the game. If they can actually get everybody critically injured, that's another way to win as well. And play, they're just going to keep moving around just like the players would normally. And they function very similar to the players as well. But their objective is just to stop the players from getting to the bunker. And yes, there's a lot of nuance in what these guys can kind of do. There are just things I need to talk about. Like if you get two wounds, you're going to turn your character to the side. And on your turn, you can simply just move like that. You're basically crawling on the ground. And you need somebody to heal you. So somebody will have to actually come up to you and roll three or higher to heal you. And if they do, you'll get your character stand up again. 
<laughs> until, of course, the witch comes back and knocks you over again. Um, I, I think that's pretty much the main stuff in the game. You just keep going around until the people exit the bunker, or all players are either devoured in some way, or they fall over, in which case this player here wins. There's some other ways you can lose the game. For instance, this event deck is going to have a card on the bottom called Darkness, which I talked to you about during the setup, and if this card gets drawn, then the game is going to end, and the bad guy, or the evil one, is going to win. So if this, if, if a, the event card Darkness is drawn, Evil wins. If all players end up laying down on the ground, which means they can no longer heal, then Evil wins. Or if two players, or more depending on the number of players in the game, get removed, then Evil will also win the game. The only way for the good guys to win is get to the bunker with the correct code, and in this case it's 45, so you'd actually have to do something like 6 times... Uh, or six, I don't know. Let's see if I can even do a, a math equation here for you. Six plus, I don't know, five, that's 11, times four. Maybe that'll work, 44. Eh, close enough. But if you can get 45, you, you get what I'm saying. You'll be able to escape through the bunker and save yourselves. That's the game, a curse a victim, the cursed forest, sorry. Let's go ahead and talk about it. I'll discuss some interesting things about it, some unique abilities the characters have, and the different types of villains as well. A campy horror game with a twist where somebody becomes a traitor. Yeah, you've probably never seen one of those games before. Ah, Betrayal in the House on the Hill. But this one is slightly different. And by that, I mean it plays the same every time as far as the story goes. It's not gonna have different stories and whatnot. But the type of a traitor will change based on who gets cursed, and each of those characters are going to have a unique board as well as a rage board or bar that's going to increase. Uh, we'll go ahead and just discuss one of those guys really quick here. So for instance, we have the werewolf here, and the werewolf's actions are uh, they can go ahead and use the, the hunt, which is to move, and they roll the red die, which we talked about, or a skill. And the first skill here is simply if you're on a space, with another bat, with another victim, with a victim, as the werewolf, you can roll the die and damage every character in. Now, how that works is you'll roll your die, and then the victims will take their vitality and they will roll, they'll do a test basically. So if I rolled my die as the bad guy and I rolled a five, and the victim that I was attacking had three vitality, they would roll three die. And if they got a five or higher, they would be safe from my attack. Otherwise, they're going to suffer a wound. If they suffer their second wound, that character is going to then be. Uh, critically injured and they're gonna fall to the ground and the only way they can get back up is to be healed Speaking of that I didn't discuss one of the tiles which is this one here the herb tile if you walk onto this tile You can utilize its specific herb token in order to heal yourself by one point which can help a player even when crawling on it And the next ability on here is a zero attack uh, with one stamina and it's and it's called target choose a victim and put the target uh, target token on them if they run in their turn, the werewolf can hunt immediately for one turn. So if they choose to run, this can actually move, they can, the werewolf can actually move against them. Uh, a double slash, which is two stamina. Remember, you get one every turn and you can choose to save it. Attack a victim on the same tile of the werewolf two times. So two attacks in one turn, which can instantly critically wound somebody. And the wolf bite, if your rage bar is full, and there's different reasons why you'd have your rage improve, usually it's because if A, there is a critically injured person on your turn, or for every two wounds you're going to go, at, you know, yeah, yeah, for every, if you have a critically injured person on your turn, you'll actually move this rage bar up. If it's full, you will reduce it and uh, uh, turn the victim who has two wounds on uh, at the same tile they become the wolf the wolf play is evil and they can use evil die to roll for hunt and attack so they you can actually turn people into werewolves with this character here uh some character abilities i, I wanted to brush a little talk a little bit i brushed over them a, a little bit i guess uh diego's lucky if they find something and are successful uh they get an item card they get one more item card and that's one they have to have full luck for. Tools Master, they can discard one item to improve one status or one of your teammate's statuses. So there's characters or bad guys that will put things on you like webs and immobilization, that kind of stuff. He can protect you from that. Sean is very good at being a protector. And if he's on the same space as another player, he can take the wound instead of them. Or, or at least try and block the wound. And Lucian, he's really good at coding, and so he's going to be able to gain two successes as opposed to one when rolling on these specific coding areas. The items I didn't talk about too much, but you'll be utilizing them at the beginning of your turn or when they tell you to. And there's equipables as well, which you can have two of. 
Uh, the gun is going to let you decrease the action of an evil character that's one space away from you when you use it. You got the food, which lets you reroll die, and you got a hammer, which lets you destroy an obstacle or on a map tile to create a connected path. Hmm, that's very good, actually. There's a bunch more as well as to how those function. Uh, there's actually an interesting tile as well. It's a, the plain tile here, and this one here is going to put a token on it, and when a player gets to the space, they can remove that token and draw a bunch of equipment cards, and it's kind of like a free cash or cachet however you say that. Uh, this game is a cool little campy horror game. You're placing tiles down, you are moving around. You don't know how hard you should try at the beginning of the game because you don't know if you're going to turn and you don't know what card is going to be drawn to turn you or, or one of your friends. So it has this little conundrum at the beginning where do you work hard and, and push to win as best you can or do you kind of slow down and just see what happens first? Uh, and I don't know what the real answer is for that. It's like, yeah, you kind of want to push it because it's very unlikely, it's less likely you're going to be the evil one than you are going to be on the good guy side. And, and when you are the evil one, you have a lot of power and you're able to really mess with people, which is something that's really interesting because the, all the good guys think they're screwed. And the bad guy is like, I have to get this person and this person and this person's going to go over and try and heal this person. Ah, I have to do all this stuff. And so they're like frustrated, like, what am I going to be able to pull it off? And they're like thinking in their head, like, what's the best way calculating and whatnot. And all the victims are like, oh, we're screwed. There's no way we're going to survive. So it's this back and forth game of cat and mouse where the victims are trying to accomplish this code and the bad guy is trying to figure out the best way in which to me mess with other players. On one turn, the bad guy can roll tens and be really, really scary. And on another turn, they can simply be stuck in place and do nothing because they either whiffed on the roll or rolls or the other players were able to basically bully on the bad guy. And they can do that, but it's very limited as to how many times they can bully the bad guy, how many times they can limit the actions of the bad guy, and all the while, the bad guy is increasing stamina, increasing rage, and also tiles on the board can potentially wound you as well, like I was talking about the checks, and those can actually even critically wound you if you're not really careful. But you need those tiles in order to upgrade your stats. Stats are important. If you're not smart, you can't decipher the code can't decipher the code, you have to rely on everybody else, and your character is then going to do something like defend players while they do that, etc, etc. So there's a lot of this thinky, like, nervousness in the game, maybe even fear for a type of horror game, right? And which is really cool. The artwork is solid in the game, all the scary monsters look great. These are, of course, of course, prototype miniatures, but they look really nice as well, nice and big and pretty, very well, um, very well sculpted as well. Uh, these characters here, they look like little kids, but like, or like younger kids because they're smaller, but the characters look like a little more like grown adults. I don't, I, I felt, I, I like the idea of kids more in this game because you feel a little more intimidated and you feel like you're, you're more nervous as this big, scary, hulking monstrosity is coming after you. But uh, regardless, we'll see what it looks like during the campaign. The tokens function for different reasons. You're going to be gathering herbs, you're going to be gathering wounds and you're not going to want to gather one of those two things. And all the while, you're trying to decide which deck to pull from as you pull tiles to try and gather that bunker. And eventually you're going to need to try and pull as many tiles as possible because certain gates are going to require a higher code number than another in a different game. Overall, this is a fun game. Uh, as far as replayability goes, as long as you like the style of game that it is, it's a, it's a tile placement game that has that little traitor aspect where it's a one versus many. It plays fairly quickly. You understand how the actions and turns go pretty easily. You're going to enjoy this one here. If you want something that's got a lot of replayability with a lot of different scenarios and all that kind of stuff, this is not really that same type of game. This is going to be more focused on tile placement and moving around with, with somebody basically trying to... It's a one versus many game with a little bit of a twist involved is what I'm basically trying to say. Overall, I enjoyed it. There's a luck factor as well involved as well because there's a lot of die rolls. Sometimes you'll get what you want, sometimes you won't. If you don't like a lot of luck in a game, this one's going to have that. In addition to, there's it, it's chance whether you can increase your skills in a lot of ways as well because you may or may not roll what you need in order to increase your skill. So you either really boost yourself or you don't. Uh, that's pretty much it. The quality of the game is great. The artwork of the game is great. We had a lot of, lot of fun playing this one. We had a lot of mutual, like or a lot of different emotions going on at the table so there's a lot of different opinions going on i'd asked people what they thought one was just like oh the bad guy is so hard and the bad guy's like you guys are so crazy you're moving around i can't get to you and then i'm just sitting there going i was eaten 
I was eaten and now I'm gone. <laughs> and so it has this weird feel to it where everybody just kind of has their own unique. So I think with this one here, look into it yourself, see what you like about it and determine whether it's something for you. For me, it was an enjoyable horror game and because I'm a horror genre type of a person I type I tend to lean towards these type of games and I overall enjoyed the victim the cursed forest if you're interested take a look down below check out the link in the description and let me know what you think down below in the comments thanks so much for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube like subscribe push that notification bell button it does help we do greatly appreciate it and check out our website we do giveaways most of the time when not during a pandemic because uh, things are tight, sorry. But we will post stuff up. And we do have a live stream every Wednesday, 7.30 or 6.30 p.m. PST. You can watch us play games just like this one on the stream. And we still give away games there. So you can go ahead and win some giveaways there. We have a lot of great stuff. This coming week here, this Wednesday, is going to be another great live stream by uh, Gameland Games, Tiny Epic. I have them somewhere around here. I was going to show you the big thing, but maybe on the next video. Regardless, it'll be a lot of fun. You guys should join us for that specific special fun spot sponsored live stream. If you're interested in taking a look at the game Victim of the Curse Forest, go down below, like I said, hit that link in the description and check it out on the Kickstarter and give me some feedback as to what you guys like or don't like about the game so I'm made aware and it's nice to know. It gives me a little bit more perspective as I do these things. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I look forward to not being a victim in the Curse Forest with you next time.